All praise to the Most High family. We're now on day number 30 of this 100-day scripture discussion. One of the greatest motivations, something that will always keep your energy up and your mind on point and giving your all is whatever it is that you're doing to do it for the Most High. That's something that will cause your motivation to always be on. No matter the results, no matter what is or is not going on, whenever you're doing what you're doing for the most high, the motivation will always stay consistent. The motivation will always stay strong. And no matter what happens, whether the situation ends up favorably or it don't, the fact that you're doing it for the most high and you know your reward will come from him, that is enough to keep you going. Even if the things going on around, outside, uh, pertaining to the situation, isn't going how you want it to, doing it for the most high will cause it to never be in vain. And that should always be our main motivation in all things. Do it for the most high is another way of saying, seek ye the kingdom of the most high first and all things will be added to you. There's no story I feel like in scripture that is more of an example of whatever you doing, do it for the most high than the story of Nehemiah especially Nehemiah chapter 1 and chapter 2. I'm going to read a few verses from Nehemiah chapter 2, but in your own time, check out Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah chapter 2. Here was Nehemiah's story. This was a Hebrew brother that at that time, he was in another land. He was serving underneath a uh, Gentile king. And he was in a situation where he was this king's cupbearer. At that time, you could say a cupbearer was like uh, the butler or a servant to this king in his palace. And Nehemiah, he was a man of royal bloodline. So if anything, he was supposed to be the man that somebody was pouring out his wine. Because of his bloodline, he's supposed to have somebody serving him. But instead, he's a situation where he has to pour wine in another man's cup. Now, Imagine how that most likely made him feel as a man that your job is to pour wine in another man's cup. Couldn't you imagine how that may have messed with him a little bit? Just that manly pride being in a situation like that. But nonetheless, Nehemiah's mindset in that situation was I'm in an effed up situation. I'm dealing with something that I can't stand. But I'm going to do it for the most high. I'm not going to imagine that I'm pouring uh, wine in this man's cup. I'm going to do it as if I'm doing it for the most high. So his mindset was throughout this whole situation, I'm going to focus on the most high and do it for the most high. That's what Nehemiah's mindset was through the situation. And when you read through the rest of the book of Nehemiah, it's a powerful situation because this same man who it was his job to be a butler and pour drink in another man's cup, which is damn near the lowest position a man could have in life is to pour drink in another man's cup and be his butler and serve him. But Nehemiah went from that situation to being a governor of a whole whole city and a whole area and overseeing a project and in control of thousands of men under him, carrying out his orders. Because that position he had as the king's cup pourer or cup bearer, he did that so well. Why? Because he was in his mind, he was doing it for the most high. Every time he poured out that drink in that cup, he was imagining he was doing it for the most high. He was doing it unto the most high and not to man. And the most high saw his heart and the most high looked at him and said, I'm going to elevate you because you're doing what you're doing in the position you in and you're doing it to me. And I'm always on your mind. I'm going to elevate you. I'm going to promote you. And I'm going to take you from a cup bearer to a governor. And this same man, Nehemiah, because in the position and situation he was, he made the most of it by having a mindset of doing it for the most high. His motivation was, I'm going to reach excellence for the glory of the most high. He ended up being a governor to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And that king put 
hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in his hand for this rebuilding project where he went to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. And what's powerful about Nehemiah is the same mindset that he had when he was a cupbearer of doing it for the most high. He had that exact same mindset when he was a governor and the leader of the project to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So the same mindset he had in that low position as a cupbearer where he did it, his motivation was to do it for the most high. That was his same mindset whenever he became the governor to do it for the most high, to be motivated to give his highest excellence and his highest service to the most high. That was the mindset that caused him to keep moving up in the rank. That was the mindset and spirit that no matter what situation he was at in life, he gave his all into it for the most high. The most high saw that spirit and mindset and the most high lifted him up. And he kept the same type of behavior even after the most high lifted him up. Because let's go to Nehemiah chapter 2, 11 through 16. It says, so I came to Jerusalem and was there three days, and I arose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my Elohim had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well into the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain into the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the Hebrews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. So what Nehemiah is saying is that his mind was so much on his motivation was just to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem because he loved the most high. He wasn't trying to lift himself up over nobody. He wasn't trying to rule over nobody so he could feel better than somebody. His whole motivation the entire time was, I want to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem to do it for the most high. That was his whole motivation. And you can tell that was his whole motivation because he didn't even tell most of the other people what he was about to do. He didn't make no announcement what he was about to do. He just went and did it. Doing it for the most high. And it's that type of mindset, man, that if whatever we do, we do it for the most high. The father will see that work. He'll see that dedication and he'll be the one to reward us. And that was Nehemiah's mindset. That's why everything he did, he always leveled up because the father saw the work he was putting in even when nobody saw. I can even think of an example with myself like way back 2010, 2011, 2012, I was on this platform called Spreaker and I was doing discussions pretty much every day, scripture discussions on Spreaker. 2010, 2011, 2012, for almost like three or four years doing discussions on there. There's some times where I would do a three or four hour discussion and teaching and it would not even get one view, not even one. And this would go on for years. Sometimes it'll only be four or five views on there. And for years. And I didn't let that bother me. I just kept teaching. I kept going because I'm doing it for the most high. And the teachings was even helping me. So I was even getting sharpened by the teachings, even if nobody else was. So I just stayed consistent, stayed steadfast. And eventually, one of the few people that was listening on there put the teachings that was on Spreaker and put them on YouTube. And then that got a, a, a little bit even more of an audience on YouTube. And then I started being faithful with the discussions on YouTube and then the most high blessed us to start reaching a few more people and start doing some more work for the kingdom. But it all started with me on Spreaker where nobody was listening, nothing happening, but yet I still did the teachings because I was doing it for the most high and I still do it for the most high 
because I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to use the gifts, talents, and abilities he's put in me to build up his kingdom, to build up his people. And whenever we do things like that, just having a motivation to do it for the most high and to have a motivation to do it as if we are doing it for the most high. That's when the most high will take us up so many more levels like he did Nehemiah. Think of all the great movements that happen amongst our people just because somebody did something for the most high. Think about the Gideon situation. It all started with Gideon tearing down that idol of Baal. At nighttime, when nobody else saw who it was, Gideon went to that idol by himself and tore it down. And this made the Most High look upon Gideon like, okay, I can use this man. And after that, after the Most High saw that Gideon was faithful to tear down that idol out of just pure obedience and love for the Most High, that's when he raised him up as a warrior to lead an army. And then that's when the Most High used Gideon to overcome some of our oppressors and enemies at that time. But it all started with Gideon doing something simple for the Most High, which was tearing down that altar and that idol of Baal that was in his village. It all started with him just doing something for the Most High. He didn't know the Father was going to take him to be that warrior. He didn't know the father was going to take him to eventually being a man of wealth and many wives and many children and becoming a, 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 a eternal legend amongst our people. Gideon didn't do it for all that at first. His mindset was, I'm doing this for the most high because of all the most highs did for our people. I'm doing this for the most high because of who he is. That's the mindset we got to have. Think of all the times the most high could have destroyed us. Think of all the mercy the Most High has shown on us. Why should we not do what we do for the Most High? Look at the David situation. David's whole motivation of going out there to knock down Goliath was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is blaspheming the name of my Elohim? It was about him doing it for the Most High. He wasn't going out there to become the next king of Israel or have everybody singing songs about him. He did it to protect the Most High's name. He did it to destroy somebody that was blaspheming his Elohim. He did it for the Most High. Revolutions started by brothers and sisters that just did it for the Most High. Think about the story of Judith in the Apocrypha. Whenever the enemies had surrounded Jerusalem and was trying to starve our people and was blaspheming the Most High, Judith, a Hebrew woman, she said, it's not going to go down like this. And she made a plan to go cut off the head of the general of the army and rescue our people. And all because she did it for the Most High, the Most High brought about a great victory for our people. Think about the Maccabees. How at that time, they was trying to make our people bow down and eat pork and bow down to the Greeks, bow down to the Romans. But it was just a few of those Maccabee boys. It was a... Uh, uh, Jonathan Maccabees, Judah Maccabees. It was the Maccabees, their father stood on righteous business and told the Greeks, I'm not going to bow down to those false gods and I'm going to do this for the most high. And the Maccabees started a whole revolution just because they had the mindset, I'm going to do this for the most high. So in whatever situation you in right now, it may be around people that you don't even really want to be there to, to, to do nothing with. I don't know what the situation may be. It may be one of those Nehemiah situations where you know you're destined for better, but that's where you are right now. You still got to have that mindset. I'm not doing this for these people. I'm doing it for the most high. And have that heart and mindset towards what you're doing. And I'm telling you, you will always stay motivated. During those times when I was on Spreaker, where nobody was listening, wasn't nothing happening, those were some of the best times of ministry because I'm doing it for the pure love of the Most High. I'm searching the scriptures. I'm learning. I'm getting sharpened. I'm getting motivated even by my own teachings. And I grew so much spiritually during that time because it was just me and the Most High, me doing it for the Most High. And that mindset right there will take you so far in this walk in this kingdom lifestyle if you just do what you're doing just do it for the most high let that be your core inner motivation if you want to get in shape 
Make sure you're doing it for the most high. Say, most high, I want to get in shape because I want to be a righteous steward over this body that you gave me. It's not about me being vain or me being lustful and egotistical. I just want to give you back a good sacrifice of this body that you gave me. You put my soul and spirit in a body. You given me life, the breath of life. I want to do right by this body. I want this body to be in shape. I want this body to be capable and able. So, Father, this is my thank offering to you. Every time I lift, every time I do sit-ups, every time I run miles, it's to your glory. I'm doing it for you, Father, because I want to do the best with this body that you gave me. Whenever you do business, most high this wealth that I'm accumulating, I'm doing this for you, Father, so that I can fund and do your kingdom work, so I can fund kingdom trips, so I can fund ministry. I'm doing this, Father, because you gave me the ability to work with my hands. Your scripture says, if a man don't work, he don't eat. So, Father, I want to do as much as I can to labor with these hands in my own business, in my own vineyard. To give you a, a worthy offering from what you've given me. Father, I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this to uh, show off on Instagram or uh, show people I got this or I got that. Father, I'm doing this because you've given me hands to labor with. And I want to show you how grateful and thankful I am by making the most of the labor and the fruit that you put in my hands. I want to multiply it, Father, to show you how grateful I am. You see, that's the mindset. That's the motivation to do it for the most high. And if you maintain that mindset, you'll never feel the need to covet, be envious, trying to compete with somebody else. You won't feel the need to do that because you in your own lane. You on your own focus and you doing it for the most high. So your eye is only on the father. And I'm telling you, eventually the day will come where you'll look up and he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Eventually, the day will come where you'll look up and you'll start to see the fruits of your labor. None of the work that you do for the kingdom will be in vain. None of his words return void. But you got to maintain that mindset like it talks about in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. With good will doing service as to the most high and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the most high. The scripture here is saying, whatever you do, do it for the most high. You know, people have a lot of motivations and reasons that they do things. Some people do it because they want to do it in the honor of somebody they love that passed away. So they're doing it for that person. But guess what? That person's gone. You may be motivated to do that for them, but they in a place where, I mean, they, they not there with you. It's cool that you're doing that for them, but they're there wherever they're at. You don't know if they're there in the kingdom. You don't know if they're in torment. It's cool that you get motivation from doing that for somebody that passed away. But why not the more so do it for the most high who is true and living, who can hear and see what you're doing for him and reward you. Those dead folks that you may be doing it for, they can't reward you for what you're doing. But the most high can reward you. And guess what? Even if the Most High didn't reward you, which that won't happen because he's right and just, he'll reward those who diligently seek him. Even if he didn't, just him giving you an opportunity in life is enough. Where we should be doing it for him anyway, whether he decides to bless us or not, whether he decides to take us to the next level or not, just because he is who he is, we should do it for him. So whenever doing it for the most high becomes your motivation, man, I'm telling you, you will never run out of energy. You'll never run out of motivation. Because just like that scripture I read, it says, what, whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the most high. Do it for the most high. Let the most high be your motivation and you'll never, never run out of motivation. Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 19. Nehemiah would often pray this prayer. Whenever you read the book of Nehemiah, all those great things Nehemiah did, giving our people a heart to keep the laws and commands again. One of his prayers that he would always privately pray to the Most High, he would say, Think upon me, my Elohim, for good according to all that I have done for this people. So Nehemiah would often remind the Most High, Father, I'm doing this for you. Please remember me, Most High. 
Please remember me, Father, because I'm doing this for you. So family, let's, let's get back to that mindset. Even if some of us may have strayed away from that mindset of doing what we do for the most high, do it for the most high. In everything you do in this life, let your motivation be that you're doing it for the most high. You being a husband, you being a wife, a son or a daughter, whatever your position is, you being an elder, you being a deacon, an evangelist, a captain, whatever your, you being an ema or a, a, a mother in the congregation, whatever your spot in your position is, do it for the most high. Because a lot of times people, the same people that you're doing it for, they, they're not able to always give you the reward. So you should be doing it for the most high because the people are not always able to give you your reward. You're, we're supposed to be there to serve the people anyway. We can't be looking for no reward to come from the people. We're there to serve them. So some people get um, frustrated like the Moses situation. All he was doing for our people and all they did was just still give him trouble and annoyance. So to the point where he had, he struck the rock and he got so frustrated with our people. We don't want to get in one of those Moses situations where we get frustrated with the people. That means we done took our eyes off the father and somehow we made it about us. We can't make that mistake. That's why we always have to be in a mindset to do it for the most high. But Moses, as great of a man as he, as he was, he even had a moment of weakness where he fell to that. That's how easy it is. Especially dealing with our people. They can take you there like that. So even the more so, we have to remind ourselves and maintain the mindset, I'm doing this for the most high. And understand it will not be in vain when you're doing it for the most high. He sees. He knows. And as it says in the scripture, Whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the most high. So do it for the most high family, no matter what the results is looking like, no matter whether it's not celebrated or celebrated, no matter whether it's prospering or not prospering, whatever the case, bond or free, rich or poor, uh, anything, well, whatever you want to put a tag on it with, as long as you're doing it for the most high, it will not be in vain. And whenever you make your, mo your main motivation to do it for the most high, that motivation will never run out. Because the Most High is always watching and he's always living. He always knows. And he's the only one that can give us access to the kingdom or say no. So if there's anybody we should be doing it for, it's him. Because he's the only one that has the keys to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the kingdom. Nobody else has that type of power to keep us out or let us into the kingdom. So we need to be doing it for the, it only, it's common sense that we should be doing it for the most high because he's the only one that has power over our soul. Like the Messiah said, he's the only one that has power to give eternal life or to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we should be doing everything for him anyway. So family, this is just a reminder for anybody who felt like they may have fallen off that focus that lately your intent has not been to do things for the most high. For whatever reason, that's not been your intent. Go back to that. Like the Messiah said in Revelation, remember your first love. What's your first love? Your first love is that you're in this walk for the most high. You're trying to make it to the kingdom for the most high. You study in these scriptures and fasting and praying for the most high. You keep in these commands for the most high. It's not to look good for other brothers and sisters. It's not to uh, look good on a social media post or whatever the case. We're doing this for the most high. That's the main focus. And once again, if we do that, like it says in the scripture, whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the most high. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the congregation. So any ambition and any motivation we have to excel, let all these things be for the most high, for the kingdom. All the motivation we have to get wealth, let it be for the most high, for the kingdom. All the motivation that we have to 
Get victory, success, and destiny. Let it be for the most high. Let it be for the kingdom. We can still have ambition. We can still have goals. We can still have focus. We can still reach for the highest. We can still have that champion mindset. But it's not out of ego and vanity. It's for the most high, for the kingdom. We doing it for the most high. Just like Nehemiah did. Just like David did. Just like Gideon did. We staying motivated for the most high. So keep that mindset in front of you, family, and I promise you will see the fruit of that. The Most High will bring it in his time. I was on Spreaker for years doing that, and it took a, a few years for me to start seeing fruit, but it came. Eventually, the fruit comes. Eventually, it comes, family. Just stay consistent, stay steadfast, and most importantly, do it for the Most High. Shalom.